What up guys, Alex here, and in today's video we'll be recreating a no face effect from my recent short film The Wedding Ritual. If you have not seen the short film yet, I definitely recommend checking it out before or after watching this tutorial and it will be linked in the description down below. You guys, I haven't recorded a YouTube video in a while so like, I'm, I don't know, I'm acting weird. So before we get started, I just wanted to give you guys a few tips on how you can achieve better results with this effect. First, before filming, I will glue some sort of paper or something similar onto my face. And this is just to make sure that we get the best tracking results because After Effects will do a much better job if we have a high contrast point. By the way, I just wanted to clarify that you don't need to do this in case you have enough detail to work with on your face. I mean, for example, if you have a beauty spot or a birthmark like I do, then you can just track that in After Effects. But even though I did not have to do this, I still wanted to show you guys the process so that you know what to do. And second, just make sure that there's nothing covering your face, such as hair or anything else, because if it does get in your face, you'll have to rotoscope it or animate the mask around it. So unless you want to do some purpose, I recommend that you keep this area clean. I don't know what I just did, but... Okay, now let's just jump right into After Effects. And by the way, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and turn on the notification bell to not miss any of my future uploads. Duh. <laughs> So I filmed a little clip of myself just looking at the camera and not moving too much. I guess this is just a very easy example to show you guys how it all works. I will start by picking any frame from this clip, which I will then import to Photoshop to further work on this effect. To render the chosen frame, I will go to Composition, say Frame As, then File, and here I will make sure that I choose to render it as a Photoshop sequence and pick the output location. Once it's done, all you need to do is open the file in Photoshop. And by the way, this is where we will be creating the actual no face effect. I'll be using a frequency and separation technique, which I use for retouching the skin all the time, but today we will be using it to erase all the features. And if you don't know how to use it or you don't feel comfortable using it, don't worry, I'm about to show you a few other ways you can achieve this result. The first example is the healing brush tool. It's super easy to use. You just have to pick the area you want to clone the texture from, click Alt, and then click on the area you want to apply it to. And the second example is the clone stamp tool. The idea behind it is pretty much the same, you're basically just copy pasting the texture. So if you want, just go ahead and use any of these methods, but I personally think that by using the frequency and separation technique, you can achieve much better results and it will look a lot cleaner. Right, let's move on to creating the effect. I will start by applying the frequency and separation action and basically what it does is it creates two layers. One is blurred and the other one is sharp and if you mix those two, you get a normal image. By the way, I always like to add a brightness and contrast adjustment while retouching just to be able to see more detail. I will then hide the sharp layer and using the healing brush tool begin to erase all of my features. And just a quick tip, be careful with what you are editing out to make sure that you don't go overboard. Okay, cool. Now, if we turn the sharp layer back on, you will notice that we still have some texture left there. So here we will just do the same thing as we did with the blurred layer. We will retouch what's left out with the healing brush tool. Cool, the effect is almost done, but a few things are still missing here and right now it just looks a little messy. As you can see, there is a lot of dark spots, discoloration and stuff, so what I will do is I will create a new layer and switch the blending mode to color. Now just click on the spot on your face where you think the color looks good and natural, lower the opacity on the flow of the brush and start painting over the areas of your face that are a different color. And the last step, again, just create a new layer, then go to edit, fill, and choose 50% gray. Then change the blending mode of the layer to soft light. 
On this layer, we will do a little bit of dodge and burn. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically like bright and dark. So we will use it to get rid of unnecessary dark spots and all that kind of stuff. I've noticed that for this effect, it works very well if you brighten up the middle of your face and darken the rest. Oh, and I also did one more thing. It's not gonna make that much of a difference, but you can still do it if you want to. Create a new layer, go to edit, fill 50% gray, and change the blending mode to soft light. Then go to filter, filter gallery, and select the texture menu. You can see the settings on my screen. This way you'll just add a little more texture to the face and make the effect a little smoother. And of course we don't want it on the entire frame, just on the face. So I created an inverted layer mask and using the white color and the brush tool, just painted over my face. Now that we have finished our work in Photoshop, just save the picture in a JPEG format and then import it back to After Effects. Here we'll have to do some motion tracking so that the effect that we have just created moves along with the footage and sticks to the face. Hopefully that makes sense. I really like using the Spot Clone Tracker from Red Giant to do this kind of stuff. However, I realize that many people don't own any of their products. So first I'll show how to track with a built-in motion tracker that comes with After Effects, and then we will move on to the Spot Clone Tracker. Just click on the tracker, track motion, and then pick the spot that you want to track. Just make sure that there's enough detail for After Effects to work with. Then go to Layer, New, Null Object, click on Edit Target and select the null that we have just created. Simply click on the play button and After Effects will do all the work for you. I started tracking from the middle of the clip, so I'll have to go back and also track it backwards. When you finish doing that, just click Apply, make sure that you have selected X and Y and click OK. Now let me quickly track the footage with the Spot Clone Tracker. If you track your clip with the built-in tracker, all you have to do is parent the effect layer to the original clip. And if you used a spot clone tracker, open up the position and anchor point parameters for your effect layer and parent the position to the spot center. When it's done, you will notice that the position of the layer changes, so we'll put it back using the anchor point tool. And now for the last step, you just have to create a mask around the face and feather it until it looks good. If you want, you can also apply some color grading and you have your effect ready. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching this video and I really hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did like it, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, like this video, turn on the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!